everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video this week. Clearly not in my own closet. I am filming from Toronto and I'm visiting my wonderful friend Kat, who is an amazing thrifter, secondhand vintage consignment shopper, and I am standing in her closet. So this is very much the opposite of my closet. Um, but it is the second Sunday of the month and Kat has a very different body shape than I do and I thought as part of our outfit recreation series I thought it would be really fun to find an inspirational outfit that works with Kat's personal style and we shop her closet. I'll also do a second look uh, from my own closet and we'll, well, we'll go back to my closet for that. But anyway, this is Kat's wonderful closet. I feel like there should be applause. Maybe I'll figure out how to do like, yay! <laughs> My insane closet. No, it's but it's beautiful, and everything is like you always do vintage secondhand. I do, I do. Ninety nine point eight percent of everything, other than my underpants. Yes, and yeah. bras. And bras. Vintage. And bras. And bras. Um. Okay. So if you are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of minimalism, using and loving what you already have, and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of clothes that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you coming back, big hello to you. Welcome. Meet Kat, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. So the inspiration that I took is almost very much, actually Kat said this, um, it's like very much Ralph Lauren, like, it's like a Ralph Lauren model. In fact, it very well could be a Ralph Lauren. I doesn't love Ralph Lauren. <laughs> So when I find an inspiration picture online or wherever of an outfit that I really like, instead of focusing on the items that we don't have in the picture, I try and focus on the elements of style that this person is using that I can totally control just by using the garments already in my closet. Or, in this case, Kat's closet. So the three things that I look at are, number one, what is the overall style genre of this look? And in this case, we found an outfit that suited Kat's personal style. I would definitely say there is that Western influence, which is really on trend right now. More so, um, it's bohemian because of the beautiful floral print. The second thing I look at are the silhouette and proportions of the outfit. So in this case, the silhouette is pretty clean and balanced, but it's definitely got a nice relaxed and sense of flow. There's great movement in the skirt, but on top, there's a little bit more structure because of the collared shirt, which brings us to the proportion play. And I would definitely say that it's pretty equal. The skirt has a nice asymmetrical hemline and she's got long sleeves on the top. There's nothing extra voluminous on one part of her body. It's a pretty nice, even balanced proportion. Finally, and I think this is where all the magic happens, are the styling hacks that are being used in this look. The first one is the use of a grounding color in both the print and the top. So blue is a really prominent color in that print, and then it's also the base color in that top. I don't think you necessarily have to have the bottom as a print or the top as a solid. You could totally switch those around. What's really making that look work is the grounding color between the two. The second styling hack that they're using is adjusting the shirt so that it falls right at the waist, the smallest part of her body. So this is really drawing the eye in to the smallest part of her body, very flattering. And they've put a belt on top. And I think that's, again, such a great way to accentuate the slimmer waist. This gives it a little touch of femininity as well. They've left the sleeves nice and long. In terms of accessories, she has matched her belt and her boots. This doesn't always have to be the case. I know we can't all have belts to match, but I think having those two kind of earth tones also really grounds the look. She's kept the neck nice and bare so that the nice interesting collar makes a really great statement, and it also leaves room for us to appreciate the nice long dangly earring and the hat that she's got on. I think those are all the styling hacks that I can see uh, in that photo. Let me know if you think if I missed any down below. Um, so now when it comes to shopping cat's closet i'm gonna show you what we came up with and why we chose what we chose so 
this is our final look that we put together. <laughs> Yay, our jazz hands. Um, so here's what we did is we started with the base of the look. Kat didn't have, I don't know if that's a skirt or a dress in the photo, but she had this great printed maxi dress actually. And so I thought this would be great to work with, especially because it has buttons that go all the way down to the bottom and we can actually just button it to kind of fake that little asymmetric hemline. <laughs> Loving your dance moves. So that was a really good base. Now when it came to adding the chambray shirt on top, we kind of missed out on the styling hack of using the grounding color from one or the other. I chose the chambray shirt because it's still a neutral and still works really nicely with this print. The other thing that we did that we almost kind of quasi ignored um, was the fact that this top is printed. However, the prints work together because there's white in both of them. So I guess maybe that's our grounding color. Ooh, so maybe we did listen to the styling hacks. The next thing that we did was to really accentuate her waist, like in our inspiration, I just knotted the blouse at the waist, making sure it was at the smallest part of Kat's body. The model left her sleeves all the way down, but I've kept them rolled up because Kat, and she's totally okay with me saying this, because Kat has a larger bust, I worried. <laughs> I worried that with the sleeves rolled down, it might just look too heavy on top. I think so. Right? I, I actually roll up most of my sleeves anyway. Winter, okay. summer, it doesn't matter because I feel the same way. It makes me look too boxy. Right? Yeah. Okay, right. So we left the sleeves rolled up. Also, Kat really likes to wear bracelets. I, I've noticed she always wears bracelets, right? On her wrists. So... I think it's a nicer way to show off her own personal style with her bracelets. Bag and the boots are actually a similar color. So we didn't get the matching belt and boots, but we were able to coordinate the bag and boots to really ground the look. And if you'll notice, the belt is olive and the hat is olive. So we're also using those grounding colors as well. No, this look isn't exactly like our inspo photo, but I think Kat looks great. And you like it, right? I wear it. Wear I would it. wear it. Awesome. I will wear it actually. Yeah, when the weather gets a bit warmer. When the weather gets warmer. Yeah. Not in minus 20, that's for sure. Okay, look two back in my closet, um, which is a lot smaller and not half as fun as cats. I have found this look of Christine Centenaire. She, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She is the either fashion director or fashion editor at Vogue Australia. Let it be known, I think Australians have some of the best style on the planet. I think it's because they don't have to worry about like getting frozen in a snowbank or something, you know? Anyway, um, so Christine Centenaire, I loved this look because it's professional and polished uh, and can work easily for like date night, but also boardroom. So the first thing that I'm looking at here is the overall style vibe. And I think I went over like all of those adjectives already. Um, polished, it's very sleek. I want to say there's a little bit of an androgyny factor in there because of that pantsuit. So let's call it uh, androgynous chic, maybe? I mean, I feel like you can't really have a look that isn't chic, otherwise I wouldn't be showing it. I think what's really important is I want to make sure I'm pulling clothes from my closet that make me feel that kind of powerful, really focused, and just sharp. So the next thing I look at are the silhouette and proportion of this outfit. There is definitely a lot going on here in terms of both silhouette and proportion. She's really playing with her silhouette by layering that shorter blazer over a long beautiful dress and then over pants as well. So it's a very varied silhouette but there's a lot of great structure and flow happening right in the middle of it. Which brings us to the proportions which are again very mixed. We've got short over long over long again, if that makes any sense. Finally, the styling hacks that she's using. So the first thing that is pretty obvious is her use of color. She stuck to neutrals, black and white, and that's what's really giving that kind of very chic and polished edge. Does it have to be black and white? No, I think you could mix a neutral and a fun pop of color, or you could color block this whole thing. What I do think is important is that 
The pants and the blazer are of a similar color so that the dress or whatever the piece that you're using to create the long proportion in the middle really pops. The second thing that she's doing is layering. She's done a great job of layering a dress over pants and then a blazer over top of that dress. The other thing that she's doing, and I think this is a great one if you're really struggling to, to wear pieces in your closet, and this is she's mixing and matching her functions. So she's taken what looks like a beautiful halter dress that she would probably wear for a cocktail or a more formal or elevated event, and she's paired it with a pantsuit. So she's really taking something she'd wear to work with something she'd wear out and mixing it together. And this really works. And let's see, gosh, a woman after my own heart. She's not even holding a bag. Yes. So quickly touching on accessories, it seems as though she's kept everything minimal so that really, so that that beautiful dress in the middle can make a big statement. She's even kept her shoes neutral and in line with the palette that she's using as her base. So um, let's see how I can recreate this in my own closet. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently based on some suggestions and based on the fact that now that I'm doing two looks, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So let's try this differently. You tell me if you like this kind of way of seeing the final look put together or if you'd like me to do it the way I've done it in past videos. But uh, okay, here's, uh, here's how I shopped my closet for this look. I think the base of this outfit is the jacket and pant combination, so I pulled out my super old trousers and my black blazer. These weren't even purchased together, so I think what's most important is that these pieces are of the same tone, either both dark or both light, so that they contrast with whatever your middle flowy piece is. I chose my double-breasted blazer with gold buttons, which is a lot like our inspiration because I like that added authority that those deals give, but I think what's most important here is that your blazer is short enough to show that big difference in proportion with your dress. I don't own a flowy, asymmetrical halter dress, so I just used my white silk shirt dress and buttoned it all the way up to the collar to achieve that nice high neckline that she's got going on. I really think you could use any dress that has some good volume and contrasting colors here. What's important is that the sleeves aren't too voluminous so that you can be comfortable underneath your blazer and that there's enough flow to the dress to fit comfortably over your pants. So because my dress options were limited, I also just for fun tried tying a scarf as a halter dress to see what that would look like, to give it a little bit more of that kind of feminine side and that really mixing of functionalities. I didn't think this result was as striking as the inspiration because I couldn't find a scarf that was a big contrast to my black suit that wasn't super thick. All of my scarves are just really thick and heavy, but I thought this was a really interesting take on the look. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I think this look with all that nice flow, and if you have a dress with print, this is a great way to add some boho chic and boho vibes to a pretty structured look. So while I didn't love the texture of my scarf, I think if you have a beautiful silky scarf or sarong at home, this would be such a cool way to style this look. Finally, I added my black patent pumps to match with my suit, but if you prefer a more playful vibe, a fun colorful shoe would work equally well, or if you prefer flats, those would look awesome as well. Just make sure they're either flesh toned or the same color as your pants to elongate the look. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out, and uh, I would definitely wear it, but jury's out on the scarf. Tell me which one you prefer. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you like this video and the two different looks. Um, Kat is an amazing photographer, so if you want to thank her for, you know, lending me her closet and her awesomeness and her willingness to participate, um, go check out her amazing, beautiful Instagram page. She's just got such a beautiful eye and I just, I love looking at her photos. So um, you can find her on Instagram. I'll link her um, info down below. And uh, yes, let me know if you thought those looks were a hit or a miss. Uh, let me know if there's a style vibe you'd like me to cover in the comments below as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. I think I said like this video. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao!